Good morning, everybody. It's Dave Juno. I hope you're all having a great day so far or good morning so far. Um, so as I posted in a group that I founded, I've been in a flare since Saturday. Now, this is weird. Probably not weird, but in a way, it kind of is. Um, and I kind of learned... I knew sound did affect me, but this was like weird. Um, so as all of you do know, because I've mentioned it past in other videos, that I do all the video work for my church. Um, I record mass every sun, uh, Saturday. We do it. record mass every Saturday, and I do all the video editing, the sound, all that stuff. Believe it or not, I do it all on my phone, which is I'm recording, my, recording this video on, um, because the phone actually does a better job than a camcorder, believe it or not. Um, so I do all that stuff. And so I go early on Saturday um, to set up. Now it doesn't take that long to set up, but if I don't go early to set up and I set up in a rush, there's always a problem. So I go early set up, I make sure everything's working, I'll do a test video, I'll do all this fun stuff. And it, it doesn't take that long. So, usually between 3 and 3.30, the cantor, who leads the people in song, the congregation in song, and the, I'm going to call him the keyboardist, I'm not doing piano slash organist crap, um, like he wants to be called, never mind, um, the keyboardist, they practice, while the cantor was having a hard time making a noise, uh, making a noise, <laughs> well, she did make a noise later, um, Getting in tune or something, I don't know. From what I could hear, which is not a lot, but she sounded like she normally did. She decided that she was going to face the brick wall and make this. I caught, at first, it sounded, I thought it was a screeching owl, but it actually, I called it, I'm not going to say what I called it, but if you ever watched The Incredible Mr. Limpet, Mr. Limpet falls, he wishes he was a fish in the beginning of the movie, he falls in the water um, and he becomes a fish and he ends up doing the sound to uh, drive off torpedoes that are hitting, that are about to hit submarines or boats. And it's like, <sighs> well, this canter woman did it way, way, way louder than that. I mean, it was louder than the organ. And it bounced off the concrete, and she did it three times. The first time, I was just like, on the second time, everything started spinning. And and then I I was like, oh, my God, I got to film this mass, and I'm spinning. My wife's not home. She's out with her cousins. I don't know if I can run this camera. Oh, God. And I just, I, I literally went on the bench, and then... I was starting to panic, but then I remembered what my friend Gina Marie taught me um, when that happens. Lie flat on your back, put one knee up towards your chest and the other one on the, your other foot on the floor, and it might help. And so I did that, and the vertigo stopped within five minutes, which is, thank God. It was either that or it was divine intervention. So that stopped, but I was still dizzy and wobbly. The whole mass it really scrambled my brain so bad that I it I couldn't I, I mean it took all I could to focus on doing the mass and then it took all the focus I could to come home and edit the video now editing the church videos don't take that long um, because with this with the phone it's all one big file compared to this where it breaks it up into two gigabit files so it's one big file but I have to type all the credits and all that stuff and that took me a half hour because my eyes just could not focus on the keyboard because I still had that off-balance noise in my head. And, but I did it. I pushed and pushed and pushed, and I did it. I got it all done. And I don't think I've ever been to bed on a Saturday night at 7 p.m., 7 o'clock at night, um, in my whole adult life. I even, even having flus and colds, I don't... Never, I'd never go to bed at 7 o'clock at night. Um, I was in bed. I took the last Valium I had because I was waiting for the doctor to, to send my prescription. And I literally went to bed. I just couldn't. Um, Sunday, I barely got out of bed. 
it was so bad that tr and it, that was a trigger. That low bass uh, sound was a trigger. Now, the woman apologized and she really didn't have to. And I'll be honest with you, she didn't. She knows I have Meniere's disease, but she doesn't know that sounds gonna affect me like that. So it's not really her fault. And I told her a thousand times, please, it's okay, don't worry about it, it's fine. <coughs> Excuse me, I said, don't worry about it, because it's not her fault. It's not her fault I have Meniere's disease. <laughs> so, but Monday, oh, I paid for it. Sunday I paid for it, I was in bed most of the day. Um, Literally, just most of the day in bed or on the couch. Um, thank God my wife actually stopped me like football because she was really watching it with me and she was interested. Um, and Monday was the same thing, uh, maybe a little better. I mean, I got up and took a shower, made dinner. But I spent, did spend a good deal of chunk, chunk of change on the couch, lying on the couch and lying in the bed. Um, with my two doggies, they were really concerned because they were literally all over me. Um, and Tuesday was almost the same thing. A little better Tuesday, I was able to run and do an errand real quick and then come back, but I did rest most of the day. And Wednesday, I felt fine. Wednesday, I felt, actually, I felt normal. Like, I was like, whoa, I feel normal today. Um, you know, he's like a bunch of errands done. I went for a mile and a half, two mile walk. Um, I had to get my, my new car, I had to go get fixed. Um, so I brought that down to get fixed. I did all these things and I felt great. And then yesterday, pfft, yesterday morning, oh, it's awful. Um, but as the day went on, I did feel better. I will say that I did feel better as the day went on. But this is what I'm talking about where you, you should really know your triggers and listen to your body. Now, every mass I go to that I know she's gonna canter at, which is pretty much most of them, I'm gonna bring my, I'm gonna bring my wireless earbuds with me that have, um, they have pass-through hearing, but I'm gonna bring them with me. So that noise, this never ever bothers me again. I learned a lesson. That <laughs> noise, is a trigger for me. And it actually, believe it or not, it scrambled my brain. I, I don't care what anybody calls it, it scrambled my brain. So from now on, I know that I have to bring my Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus with me. So it has sound, uh, I don't know, it, 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 blocks, it blocks sound in and I can control the volume and I don't have to worry about that ever again. <laughs> Um, which is a good thing because I'm going to see Genesis in December next month with my son, um, my oldest boy, and yeah, I'm going to bring these with me so I don't get a track attack. Now that I know that is definitely one of my triggers, there's my prevention or try to prevent with the triggers. So you really should, it, you know, I'm telling this story because you really should learn your triggers. Now, if you go to McDonald's, um, which I don't suggest that you do, and I don't go that often. <laughs> I think maybe once or twice a year. Um, you know, if you get the fries and you have vertigo or you get an attack, stay away from salt. Um, same thing with coffee. Um, here's my coffee. Um, I drink a lot of coffee. I don't, shouldn't say I drink a lot of coffee. I drink two cups a day. Um, I used to drink a lot more, but I drink two cups a day. Now, if you have a vertigo or feel dizzy after drinking coffee, then caffeine is a trigger for you. Um, and that's with anything. I know a neighbor across the street, she doesn't have Meniere's disease, but she gets vertigo from scents, women's perfume um, or cologne, men's cologne. She gets vertigo. And we had this discussion yesterday, actually, because she gave me a ride to pick up my car last night. Because um, yesterday I did feel a little better. So, yeah, she was telling me how she sends her cologne, perf perfume, things like that. So that's her trigger. So she stays away from it. She doesn't wear it herself, and she makes sure her husband doesn't wear it. And she lets people know around her that this is a trigger for me. So she that's her way of avoiding triggers. So when you find your trigger... Now you know what to stay away from to prevent an, a vertigo attack or going into a full-blown Meniere's day, day's attack. Um, 
And the same thing with nicotine. If you smoke cigarettes and you notice that your tinnitus amps up or, or you get dizzy or whatever, it might not necessarily be that your blood pressure, blood pressure is, is fluctuating from the nicotine. The nicotine could be affecting your cochlears. You gotta stop smoking, or at least try to stop smoking. Um, or cut down your smoking. Because uh, I know a lot of people do smoke. I used to smoke. It's been almost uh, 17 years <laughs> since the last cigarette I had. But I still do chew nicotine gum from time to time, even 17 years later, um, because it's my stress reliever um, when things are going crappy and it's been kind of uh, stress stressful in the house. Um, everything's fine with me and my wife and my kids. It's just some medical stuff. Um, so, you know, on that note, that's why I'm making this video. And I didn't start it out as saying, hey, I learned a new trigger. I wanted to tell my story first and then talk about triggers. So once you know what these trigger things are that can set you off, maybe it doesn't happen all the time, but you know if, you know, okay, yeah, sodium will set me off, but I haven't had it in so while and I had Chinese food the other night and I was fine. Um, that doesn't mean that you're out of the woods. That just means... For some reason, you maybe you flush, you drink a lot of water that day, so the sodium flushed right out of you before it could do anything. Um, so that really shouldn't mean like, okay, I had Chinese food the other night, let me go to Burger King, get fries or onion drinks. And, and then, then you're in an attack, and then you're like, oh, why am I in an attack? You know why you're in an attack. You had salt. And even though the sodium didn't affect you with the Chinese food, it could affect you with um, Burger King. So remember that. Remember the trigger warnings, get to know your body, how things work, how you respond to different things, chemicals and, and foods and, and things like that. And even sounds, even sounds can get you, can cause vertigo and bad tinnitus. That was the other thing. My tinnitus was off the wall. So on that note, I hope you guys all have a spit free weekend. Um, I know it's been a, I know I haven't made a video in like a couple of weeks, but, um, or in a, two weeks, but like I said, I've been in a flare. Now it's Friday morning. Figured, why not make a video? <laughs> so on that note, have a spit free weekend. I will talk to you all soon. If you like the channel, subscribe, hit the bell button so you know when I'm posting a video. Um, and uh, one other thing is uh, be kind to each other. It's one thing we could use in this world, especially today where um, thing, everything is so political. Um, just be kind to each other and respect each other. Take care. See you next time.